And yes, as I did uh, mention before, we've seen a lot of pressure on the Naira in January uh, alone, and definitely the Central Bank of Nigeria. We've seen a lot of circulars, you know, come out. And uh, just yesterday, uh, we see the banks uh, were actually addressed in the latest circulars. Also, IMTOs, International Money Transfer Operators, were also uh, addressed. New guidelines at this point. We're all trying to save the Naira at this point. Joining us now is Dume Biolubole, senior economist and at uh, FDC and Stairs, uh, joining me right here in the studio. Great to have you, Dumebi. Thank you so much for having me. Good morning. Yes. Guys. I don't know if, you've, if you can keep count of the circulars <laughs> we've seen from the central bank, you I know, at this can. point. Like they just three. keep coming back to back. Yes. Yes, and they're important to somewhat right. signal to the economy and try to instill confidence. But if we can take a few steps back to right. understand why the circulars are even coming out in the first place and um, also trying to understand and situate it into what's happening with the Forex market. So starting off, um, I think on the 29th, the action rate significantly depreciated, at least um, per the FMDQ reporting. It depreciated from around um, 890 Naira to a dollar to about 1,300 and I think 52 Naira to a dollar. The next day it moved up again 1,000 about to about to over 1,400, and as of um, yesterday, it was about 1,500. So the reason why this happened is for two things. Number one, the CBN had earlier come out to say that there was some level of misreporting with um, FX transactions um, from market participators, the dealers, um, DMBs, and, as, uh, and the likes. And then FMDQ, in response to that circular, alongside its own um, um, regulations and its own uh, evidences part its uh, portal and re um, reporting realized that they had to also update their methodology change the methodology to reflect the market rate um, and this is because initially what was reported on FMDQ and I think from the CBN as well as a weighted average of the last 10 10 day trades but right now um, from both the CBN and from FMDQ we're going to see a more holistic approach capturing rates from um, 12 noon the day before up until um, the next day so meaning 24 hours trades and what and the price you're now going to see is actually just closing rate um, for the day so initially what was being reported was we, in the morning as well you also find some indicative quotes on FMDQ's platform and they think they're going to stop that basically the new methodology is, is now going to reflect market realities and what what now happened afterwards is that we saw a very quick convergence between the official rate and the parallel rate as a matter of fact I think on the 30th the official rate was higher than the parallel right. rate so what what, what we were seeing now is a full convergence between um, the policy the official rate and parallel market rate and more significantly is that it somewhat seems that there has been two devaluations of the currency between May 2023 when we initially had the first FX liberalization and um, uh, just this January, we're seeing another one. All together, we're seeing the currency lose over 40%, over 50% really of its value That's in a matter of eight months. Like, but if we look at January, yes. you know, at this point, we see at uh, the start, uh, the official window was about 872 yes. um, Naira to start, then obviously ended about 1,000. 455 Naira yes. to the dollar. 40% yes. down. Yes. That's just January. January That's yes. for the official window. Mm -hmm. Then we have the parallel market. If you can put that up for me, 1,215 Naira yes. to the parallel market yes. to 1,470, 17% down. Mm -hmm. So definitely we see the urgency. You know, yes. why the central bank is releasing all these circulars, all, these, all of yes. these uh, guidelines at this point. But they did mention something mm -hmm. about um, some of the practices of, yes. you know, the banks, you mm -hmm. know, at this point, you know, holding too much um, dollars, trying to create some kind of hedge and profit, mm -hmm. you know, from the volatility you know, that we see in the market. Banks shouldn't do that. I mean, I wouldn't say they said banks are doing that. What the secular is trying to do clearly by all indication is they're trying to mop up the, or somewhat reduce the demand for dollars at the official. So the banks weren't just holding all of that. Of course not. So the thing is, when profit. you look at when you look at the activities that happen on the FMDQ market, you realize that banks are the are pretty much the largest players in that market. And what the CBN is trying to do with that particular secular is two ways. First, trying to help the banks hedge against foreign exchange losses. Remember that um, I think up from last year we did see a lot of banks and even businesses, multinationals, recall 
incurred a lot of FX conversion and translation losses. So what this does to some extent is somewhat reduce the bank's exposure to such losses because the net opening balance for a bank at that point in time is pretty easy to, to lose at that point when you start the trading day. So, so the central bank is saying, 20% of your shareholders fund should not be held as, once it is in excess of that, you can, you know, try, just try to mop up that, that money, reduce the, your exposure to FX conversion or FX translation losses. On the second hand of that, what that also does is it somewhat helps to reduce um, too much activity, like too much demand at the FX market outweighing supply. So it's so much of a win-win um, to, to an extent. But then again, when you also look at the fact that if we backtrack a bit, you realize that the main issue here is dollar liquidity. And the main sources of Forex for Nigeria were still having issues with that. But the CBN so is what making it does, look like the banks no. have a lot of dollars. And if they push all of that you mm. know, out, give it to some of those customers, mm -hmm. then there will be liquidity. So this is it. Banks are in the business to make profits. The same way a multinational is trying to buy some dollars, boost their business and stuff. So everyone has some dollars that they will definitely be trading in the FX market. And when you say banks are, you know, the bank, banks are not speculators. They have dollar positions and they will trade those dollar positions. And remember that people like myself and you can walk up to a bank to actually request for BTAs, PTAs. So well, the we banks are... get it when we go there. The point is that, laddie, you're trying to put me on the spot here, but... The point is that the banks are not, the banks, the demand for dollars from banks are not aloof. They're not just coming out of thin air. People are demanding for the dollars the banks are demanding for on the FX market in the, in the official window. So really what the CBN is just trying to do, like I mentioned, two things, trying to hedge the banks away from FX losses. Remember that if, it's, if, if you have... Um, um, Naira, if you're trading in Naira and maybe you also you lend in, in dollars, when that person is paying you back in Naira, to some level, to some extent, you will definitely make some losses. Aside from that, there's still a lot of distortions in Nigeria's FX market. And I think that's where our conversation should really be focused on, on the problems that Nigeria's FX market is facing so that we actually point, um, um, we actually point policymakers to the solutions that you know, we can actually create or we can bring out to solve the problem. I remember, like I mentioned, when we look at the issues that Nigeria's FX market is facing, it's two ways. There, there's an issue with market equilibrium, meaning that supply is consistently underperforming demand. Right. And what needs to be done is to support supply. And then the second thing is there's fear, there's panic, investor confidence is low. How do we also hedge against that? And when you look at the, 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 the cycle of the, when you look at the, I'll call it the life cycle now, it's, it all starts with addressing the issues with supply. And the second part of it is being more, CBN being more transparent with its policy. And that's why we're seeing a bunch of seculars just coming out, okay, this is what we mean. What about, this the, what we're about to the, do. IMTOs. the IMTOs? Of course, it's another thing to to reduce the panic, right? So remember I said there's, there are market distortions. And apart from supply, we also see that we have um, some level of restrictions. And some the CBN's policies or CBN's, um, I would say, communications are somewhat still unclear to the markets. And people just speculate, okay, could this be what they're trying to say? Is this what they're trying? And then the markets react in, in response based off of what they think the CBN is trying to say. So with the IMTOs, remember there was some level of restriction to the, kind, to the rates that the IMTO could charge, um, could charge a uh, uh, um, for transactions, I think it was plus or minus 2.5 percent of the previous day's rate. But the IM, but the CBN now is saying, just charge at the market rate. So what this does is reduces the restrictions on, um, uh, on on IMTOs. It makes the market more transparent, and it also makes it so that everybody is trading at the same rate. So by the next NPC meeting, we should see some level of. Um, coherence in all of these uh, policies that the CBN is, you know, dropping in trickles. And the end of it all is to instill investor confidence. Increase it so much so that um, we're beginning to see investment inflows trickling. Now this takes us back to the supply equation. 
We, the, on the fiscal side of things, we need to see crude oil production significantly increase so that oil receipts increase. Then on the investment side of things, both, for, both from portfolio and, and uh, um, direct investors, which, which has significantly declined. I think between Q2 2022 and Q2 2023, we saw almost an 80% decline in total capital importation into the country. To address that particular problem, that's where instilling confidence comes in. And that's what the CBN is trying to do in trickles. And by the next MPC meeting, what I was trying to say is we need to see, number one, a more hawkish CBN. You need to increase interest rates so that it, it's able to narrow the uh, um, inflation interest rate differential and reduce the negative real returns on investment. What that does is tell um, investors that Nigeria is open to do business. You can bring in your money, you get positive, you get good yields compared to what you're going to get out there. Remember, exchange rate is the price of a country's currency in the, in the international market. So you're not only competing with external vulnerabilities on your country's, on your country's uh, currency, but you're also going to compete with domestic right. shocks. So addressing com domestic shocks and trying to hedge against external shocks by increasing interest rates are the two things that we need to do now. And I think the final thing in terms of... Um, in terms of policy directions would be to avoid uh, uh, um, um, policy contradictions. An example would be increasing interest rates and, in and allowing money supply to keep increasing. That way you're, con you're contradicting your policy moves. And again, it does set, send conflicting signals to the market. Now, I guess we also need to see to synergy with, exactly other, with, with other um, agencies because we yes. know food inflation is mm -hmm. a big driver yes. you know, of headline inflation at yes. this time. So the Minister of Agriculture needs to do something of about course. you know getting food, food inflation in check. I mean, food inflation down. It, it, when you look at the problems, again, looking at the root causes of all of these issues helps to understand what policies and helps us to somewhat consolidate the kind of policies and solutions that we need to you know, make. The first one is when you look at food inflation, what is driving food inflation? Two things, exchange rates and, and low agricultural productivity. Why is, why is agricultural productivity low? There's insecurity. Farmers are not able to go to their farms. Uh, um, um, poor storage facilities. Addressing all of those issues are on the fiscal side of things. And that's why I mentioned policy consolidation. You can't see contractionary monetary policies happening and expansionary uh, uh, fiscal policy happening. And by expansionary fiscal policies, I mean that the federal government is spending meaningfully on the economy because the government still needs to spend. But the question now is, what are you spending on and how does that trickle down to create economic development and economic growth and somewhat solve the structural deficiencies that are plaguing the country. In terms of food inflation, that's where the federal government should spend and focus their attention on. It's not by intervention schemes that we're right. not pro properly monitoring. We need to ensure that these issues that are reducing and stifling uh, our food, food production are significantly addressed and catered for. Then on the second side of things, you'd look at uh, um, the exchange rate. Right. Because right now that's a significant major driver of food inflation through higher imported costs. The exchange rate pass through effects has become more potent. And the way to do that, like I mentioned, is what we're seeing the CBN somewhat trying to do right. now. We need to instill confidence. The, the CBN has bring in the dollars. Action yes. more. Ex you know, and that's but exactly what short -term we need. Short-term benefits of these uh, two circulars for the IMTUs mm -hmm. and uh, for the banks. Simple convergence. Um, the market rates should be more transparent now. We should see some. We should see an increase in um, you know, FX, FX, somewhat FX transactions because now it should be easier to get at get at the market rate. There's no you. The arbitrage opportunity has significantly declined because literally, if you go to the parallel market, you're literally going to get the same rate if you go to the go to the uh, commercial bank. So there's really no spread, or even if there, there there is a spread, because it's normal globally. But the spread right now is not too much. And so we don't need don't that feel, parallel market yes, moving farther moving away. Far, exactly. We need liquidity exactly. in the official window exactly. so that we can get all the dollars we need at this exactly. point and exactly. not demand dollars too much. Thank you so much. Thank you so uh, much to Mabel Wale, a senior economist at FDC and stairs. Thank, Thank you so, you so much. much.